One of the most remarkable stories to come out of World War II is the story of a U.S. military plane that crashed in the Pacific. On board were Captain Eddie Rickenbacker, famous World War II fighter pilot, Lieutenant James Whitaker, and a crew of six others. All eight survived the crash. The crash. And for the next 21 days, they floated in three tiny rubber rafts without food or water. Their only source of strength was daily prayer service. It consisted of reading from a pocket Bible and praying spontaneously to God. Lieutenant Whitaker was the only atheist in the group, but not for long. On the sixth day, the men were growing weak and needed food and water badly. After their evening prayer service, they fired off a flare, hoping it would attract a ship or a plane. But the flare was faulty and fell back among the rafts. As it did, it attracted a school of fish. In their excitement, two fish leaped into one of the rafts. The men had food for the first time in a week. The next afternoon, the men prayed for water. Shortly afterwards, they were deluged by a rainstorm. From that point on, Lieutenant Whitaker became a believer. On the 10th day, something special happened. After their daily prayer service, the men confessed their sins aloud. It was a beautiful display of faith and humility in the presence of God and in the presence of one another. On the 13th day, another remarkable thing happened. A heavy shower of rain passed by, missing the thirsty men by a thousand feet. For the first time, Lieutenant Whitaker led the others in prayer. He prayed that rain would return. What happened next describes, uh, is described in his book he later wrote about this experience. There were some things that can't be explained by natural law. The wind did not change with the receding curtain of rain began to move slowly toward us again against the wind. We drank and caught a store of water. On the 21st day, they spotted land. Lieutenant Whitaker manned the oars of his raft. Seven and a half hours later, he reached land. He later wrote, today, fully recovered, I, wouldn't, I would hesitate to tackle that stretch of water. Yet exhausted from three weeks of thirst, hunger, and exposure, I accomplished the feat. By the way, the name of his book is We Thought We Heard Angels Singing. As soon as they reached land, they knelt down and gave thanks to God. When Lieutenant Whitaker returned home, he wrote his best-selling book about the experience. He also toured the country, sharing his newfound faith with live audiences. The man who started out as an unbeliever became the most ardent believer of all. The similarity between the story of Lieutenant James Whitaker and the story of Thomas the Apostle in today's Gospel reading is quite striking. Both men who doubted, both were men who doubted, both eventually became ardent believers. They became more. They became missionaries to others. Whitaker's missionary efforts took him on speaking engagements in which he shared his new faith with people across the USA. Thomas the Apostle, his missionary efforts took him all the way to India. The missionary work of these two men con continues <clears throat> to bear fruit to this very day. For example, there are thousands of Christians in India who trace their faith through ancient family traditions all the way back to St. Thomas the Apostle. And in 1987, 
Many years after Whitaker published his book, Reader's Digest ran a story on how the book still impacts people today. The important thing is that both St. Thomas and Lieutenant Whitaker went from non-belief to belief. Both became apostles who shared their faith with others. Now there's a lesson here for all of us. Many of us have gone from unbelief to belief in our own lives. But how many of us have taken the step that both St. Thomas and Lieutenant Whitaker took? How many of us have become apostles to others? In addition to this being the second Sunday of Easter, today is also known as Divine Mercy Sunday, calling to mind how incredibly generous, loving, merciful, and forgiving God is to us through his Son, Jesus Christ, and how God, through his Son, Jesus, calls us to be the same in dealing with one another. That's the message of today's gospel. Jesus tells us, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. The point Jesus makes is that we have given, been given the faith by him not to be locked away in our own hearts, but to be shared with our brothers and sisters. It is to be shared with our children. It is to be shared with members of our own families. It is to be shared with friends who once believed in Jesus, but have become inactive in faith. And this is where I get into trouble, because I go off script. But I'm going to venture into it. For those of you who get the uh, twice weekly rag that we get, uh, you'll notice in the local section, the head story there is about how uh, church going is on the downswing in society today. It's an interesting article, and I think it uh, sort of backs up the challenge that the Lord Jesus makes to all of us to be the apostles, the missionaries, the sharers of faith that he wants us to be. St. Francis of Assisi once said, and I'm paraphrasing, Preach the gospel always. If necessary, use words. Our faith is to be shared with acquaintances and neighbors who are still searching. This is the message of our gospel today. We are not just called to believe in Jesus and leave it at that. We are called to share our faith. In the words of St. Pope John 23rd, Every believer in this world must become a spark of light. This is necessary. This is important. This is possible because God is good all the time. You believe that, right? Just checking.